What are the bigger questions that we want to ask? And we might not even have the answers. And that could be quite interesting in a good way, you know. All of this is just really about transformation, right? That's really what this program is focusing on. Imagine to yourself as a fashion designer, but 20% of what you do is only about clothes. What does the other 80% look like? I feel like as designers, we are revolutionizing the fashion industry. What is fashion? <laughs> I want to find a solution to help something or to solve something. The most exciting thing is how everyone is now really questioning the value of their time and maybe there is a possibility for new ways of thinking. I want to find a solution to help something or to solve something instead of creating something that's already existed. My parents, they're from the business side, and when my mother gets home, she has to be a mother and also a businesswoman. She has to be on and off, switching in between roles. So that kind of gave me an idea. If I could create flexibility within the suit, that, that allows her to perform more freely. The idea initially started when I was buying fruits in the supermarket and I would see these fruits being wrapped around in this web-like foam. So that kind of gave me an idea if I could create flexibility within the suit but still looking sharp. So I did laser cutting. Perception, projection and reflection. So creating flexibility within the classic suit. It's almost like breaking out of the suit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do miss my home a lot. I don't have the time to make new friends here. I kind of like feel I'm the surface of the New York. I'm just in the person's little like a tiny studio with my classmates together. But for this year, I, I know I need to work here, I need to learn. Because I'm not in China now, I feel the special connection of this traditional Chinese calligraphy. This can have a connection to my family. Because my father is an amateur painter, the way how we talk, it's like, oh, he got some new paintings and he sent through this WeChat to me to let me say, oh, how are you feeling about my paintings? And I feel that moment as just was so touching. So I kind of like feel, oh, okay, this ink painting or this calligraphy is a special way how it connected me to my family. When the students come into the program, you're really trying to tap into their own psyche. I want them to be able to stand on their own two feet, be independent, to navigate the world more smartly. It's also about building trust with each other. If I want my students to open up and share their inner thinking and inner thoughts, then I have to offer the same thing back in order to have a conversation that is meaningful but also having the understanding how difficult that really can be. The starting point was like making a zine. DIY processes and like graphic languages and like combining them again with like archetypal garments, blazers, work suits. Making is kind of a collage effect. If there is a drawing of a cowboy, that kind of silhouette will inform the shape of the garment. It's kind of like full embodiment of photographic imagery. So it's like similar, it's like making a zine, it's just like a different lens. During this time, I was like really frustrated. And my mom always like tell me some a saying in, in Chinese. If you are a beautiful enough flower, the butterfly will just like naturally come to you. When I was in Taiwan, I kind of like have the natural fear of exposing myself. What if my parents kind of found out that I'm a gay? I haven't really came out fully with them. The very first project of our program is a collaboration project with a homeless transgender youth 
from that project, I started to get in touch with like people who have the similar experience as I do. I just like gradually kind of getting over the fear of what I had in Taiwan. It just like a really long process of appreciating the freedom and openness of what New York City is. I feel clothes should be serving other people. It's not only purely about self-expression. Mm, so I was born in an inner city of the China, and it has a lot of small commodity markets there. It's like very, very noisy and intensive place. I always went there for shopping, and I see like piles of toys and intensive colors. I always imagine I'm those toys and fight with each other. So I combine like those kind of small and strange components and like engineered into the garment. But I think this kind of synthetic material, if we are not abandon them, like we are using them for a long time, it won't end up in the ocean. So I kind of like turn those synthetic material and plastic into something that people may like love it and keep it. And it won't be like broken, it will be treasured and it will like last forever. Because I always walk slower than others, I think it's a weakness that I don't like to face before. This time I want to face to my weakness of my own physical body and to find some dialogue between that and my collection. So I began to draw marks on my own body parts, like legs, arms, and neck. I think it's a process to like re-render my marks and treat my body as my own canvas. So like a second skin. It have optical illusion. I think for the fashion, everyone needs to be different. We don't need to fit in it. Because I really don't want to be a manager and to do the same job like 20 years. Life is repeat, 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 repeat. Practically in the studio from weekdays to weekend, you need to be by yourself. You need to have all these equipment by you so you can work. Fashion needs that to push us to create new things, to meet deadlines, to keep moving forward. I swear to God, like I would go to sleep at like 5.30 a.m., go to a friend's house, sleep for 30 minutes and go back into the studio. For young people, we're figuring out how to work within the fashion system. You need to really be able to adapt and grow with your project as it kind of becomes sentient and really embrace that. Knowing that you might not arrive exactly where you thought you were, but that is okay. It was putting a lot of pressure on myself to fulfill like the expectation of what a fashion designer should be. Relinquishing power allows your materials to do what they, they want to do. Not having so much control is really liberating. It also really celebrates human touch. There's definitely a way to like awaken people's thinking so that they're able to like generate their own thoughts and really interact with materials in unique and intimate ways. What I'm trying to do is recreate memories and make them more physical. It's based on a series of photographs taken by my grandfather. The idea is rooted in being children of immigrants and not knowing your cultural or historical family roots. Recreating that through different textiles and piecing them together. Fashion is a very tough industry and I think part of the misunderstanding is the time and the labor intensive elements towards it. Maybe if there was more awareness to that, people maybe would have more appreciation of like garments rather than fashion as like this frivolous thing. Fashion, there's many issues with it, there's like labor issues, environmental issues. And I want to contribute positively the best I can as a designer.
I really hope the consumer is thinking about the clothing and where the clothes were made and they're excited by material and they're excited by the process and there isn't such a huge detachment from product and design. Being a good designer means solving a problem and you're trying to design for and creating a solution to help someone. It was so important to develop a thesis collection based on fitting all types of bodies that aren't included in the fashion industry. I always had this intense frustration with how the industry never really catered for people of my body size and shape. And I feel like we are so multi-dimensional and our clothes still remain the same. Like, having the ability to fit an extra small to an extra large but also have a multifunctional aspect to them so that they aren't just one form-fitting garment or object. It can morph back and forth between, you know, leotards and bags and hair scrunchies and a dress, kind of like an all-in-one piece. I was looking into ideas of preservation, but also longevity. And longevity is so important in my design process because, you know, I use upcycling from like old objects and heirlooms that I've accumulated over the course of my life. And now I feel like that they, they can live after the runway and filling that gap that the industry neglects a lot. I'm obsessed with this tension between the real life and imaginary fantasy. Doing the fashion design, I feel like it's more interesting than just creating characters on paper. I really like to watch people become my characters. Some of my garments are really irregular and some of them have this exaggerated details. For me, it's just like building a fantasy land to recreate things and people I knew in real life. My work is trying to combine this sophisticated craft with child's play. The idea of the industry is one thing and the reality of it is another. It's also a huge space where they can exist. And I also feel like if it doesn't exist yet, then they should make it exist. You know, you need to be obsessive, be tenacious and challenge yourself, be critical. Designing is always about problem solving to a certain degree. And that's a lot where the innovation really lies. Yeah, this will be our last question. Do you feel like you belong in the fashion industry? Do I feel like I belong in the fashion industry? When all of a sudden everything kind of collapsed and you feel like you have nothing, it's kind of like another way to say like, oh, now you kind of have everything because like everything is possible. We've really started to associate manufacturing and perfection as normal. I feel like when humans actually engage in craft, mistakes do occur and I think that's something that should really be celebrated. We're living in a very wasteful time and pretty reckless about it. If things mean more and we like use them for longer and like find ways to keep making the same things exciting to us then that's a really positive thing for you know not just the industry but just like life in general. You're trying to open up another world to them, to equip them and take a stand about their own work and give them that confidence. It doesn't always make sense to them when they're in the program. It could be a year, two years, three years. It all falls into place for them. <laughs>